In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 2,000 years, I really don't believe people have changed much. Yeah, technology has changed. Certainly it has. But considering our basic wants and desires, they have not. What drives us, what we seek in life, the constant, is that we want to be happy. It is as true in Jesus' day when he preached the Sermon on the Mount as it is in our day. And Jesus preaches on a hillside. Blessed are those Happiest are those that could be translated. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. And I suspect that those who heard those words had a difficult time in hearing them. And if we listen closely, we too might have a difficult time in hearing the Beatitudes. The Sermon on the Mount flies in the face of convention. Conventional with wisdom. One might even call it common sense. And common sense is generally accepted as be the wisdom that's passed on in a culture to culture because it has been applicable to lives throughout the test of history. I won't bore you with Hans George Gottimer's theory on the census communist, but it's basically, it has worked for a long time. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. What? Those who don't have any self-image or very little of it? Why, aren't they kind of losers to us? Blessed are those who mourn. Now who in their right mind wants to seek a blessing through very painful losses in life? Blessed are the meek, which means blessed are those who are in, have a gentle spirit. While we know in our world, those with the gentle spirit will be the doormats of those who are more powerful. Blessed are the pure in heart. How many of us are not real sure about the pure in heart. They seem to us as prudes or self-righteous prigs. Blessed are the merciful. Well, somewhere you've got to draw the line. And all of these beatitudes, these attributes Jesus is talking about seem to be quite Pollyannish. And I suspect that many who heard it for the first time were looking around and saying, what is he talking about? Has he lost his mind? Or is he just simply naive? 
or is he some wandering dreamer? Perhaps even some of them thought Jesus had, had laid down a formula for misery. It sounds like if we were to follow Jesus' teaching, we are, would be following down the path of being a victim to this world. And we might think, if this is what it means to be blessed, I'm not real sure I want to be blessed. Life's going to bless me with those anyway. I think I'll pass on that. And I suspect there were those who, who heard what he said and grumbled. And one thing we often find about Jesus' sermons, people didn't like them. The first one he ever preached almost got him killed. They tried to throw him off a cliff. But then again, we human beings have always had a difficult time with divine wisdom. Thus saith the Lord, my ways are not your ways. It seems to me that the rise and the fall of the Beatitudes uh, centers on one Greek word, makarios. We translate it so often, blessed or blessed or happiest. Happiest. The difference between the way we normally translate that Greek word when we talk about happy, happy always depends upon circumstances. The circumstances that are outside of ourselves. We have a good day at work. We come home and we're happy. Our spouse speaks a kind word to us. Why? We're happy. We have good relationships and we're happy. Everything seems to be going right. Things are, all things are coming up roses, as the old saying goes. God is in his heavens, and all is right with the world, and we are happy. But, the winds of change come. The circumstances change. Where are we? Many people spend a lot of their life and their emotional and psychological energy trying to manage the circumstances so that they might have what they call happiness. But that is different. And if I were to choose a better translation of Makarios, it would be Joy-filled. You see, the happiness we talk about contingent upon circumstances is short-lived. Any realist knows that. I guess one reason why I like Willie Nelson's songs, I know you're tired of hearing about Willie, is because he's a realist. One song, turn out the light, the party's over. They say that all good things must end. 
Call it a night, the party's over. And tomorrow starts the same old thing again. And that's realism. It's fleeting. But the Beatitudes, instead of being short little quips about idealism, are divine pieces of wisdom about the reality of our lives. In this world of ours, we're going to have heartache. We're going to have loss. We are going to hear vicious lies spread about us. We will be bullied physically, financially, emotionally. Jesus speaks of a joy that transcends the circumstance. Blessed, he says, for example, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Joyful are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. That word comforted in the Greek literally draws a mental image of someone seeing someone in need in pain, and they sprint to the side to bring aid and comfort. And he is drawing a picture of God. That when we lose the ones we love, there is God who sprints to our side and embraces us. To avoid mourning, there is a good way to do that. Don't love. Don't care. But a part of us knows that would be misery, wouldn't it? i give you an example because today is a very special day. And I know all of you are thinking, well, it's the Super Bowl. No, it's Groundhog's Day. For those of you who don't like football, I suspect they will run the 1993 movie Groundhog's Day on another channel. If you don't like the Chiefs or the 49ers, you might watch it. It's a wonderful movie that makes this point very well, even though I don't think it, it was intended. Bill Murray of Saturday Night Live and that crew plays the part of a self-absorbed television news reporter and he's given the horrible task to go up to a little town in Pennsylvania and to see if the groundhog will see his shadow. He's staying in a bed and breakfast, and the first morning he wakes up before this arduous task of looking at Punch Tony Phil, the groundhog, he doesn't care. And he wakes up by the alarm, which is the radio, and it's Sonny and Cher singing, I got you, babe. I never liked it.
And so he uses and abuses everyone around him. He's not a happy person, but he is looking for happiness in all the wrong places. He goes to bed that night after it's over because a snowstorm comes in. He couldn't wait to get back, but he can't. And the next morning, I got you, babe, comes on again. And it's the same day, over and over, and we go through many attempts to make meaning out of the same day, over and over and over. He tries to kill himself, sits in a bathtub, throws an electric toaster in there, and the next thing you hear, I got you, babe. If you've never seen it, 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 it's a marvelous uh, 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 way of talking about looking for happiness in all the wrong places. And Bill Murray's character starts to develop himself, do things for people. And finally he comes to that that marvelous point that life is full, even if he has to live the same day for eternity, in being there and bringing life to others. I won't tell you how it ends. But I hate that song. And the key beatitude is this. That is not in Groundhog Day movie. Joyful are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they shall be completely filled. Righteousness means right relationship to God. To be starving for a relationship to God. To be thirsty for the living waters of God. They shall, in the Greek, completely filled. Because that's the most important thing in the joy of God. Not dependent upon circumstances but dependent upon a love that will not let us go. A love that is a comfort in the trying times. A joy in the midst of circumstances, even though they be painful. So those of us who seek after happiness, I say to you, Turn out the lights, the party's over. But those who seek the kingdom of God, the reign of God, even if we have to do it all over again, we will do it with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let